Whether it's pumping out sausages or getting the premium cut, these young butchers are among the best in the business. This is absolute finesse. It's the absolute top shelf of uh, the butchering ability. They come from five tape colleges throughout the state, all intent on chopping, carving and slicing better than the rest. The competition concentrates on quality rather than quantity, with each apprentice aiming to produce a cut with little fat that looks great. It's just such an important cut in the carcass. It's a high quality cut. It's, people are going to pay a lot of money for it and you want to give them a high quality product. And no, despite having to work with meat all day, there are no closet vegetarians in this group. That's easily gauged by the, the colour of their complexion and their, their level of health, you know. The best young butcher, Wollongong's Martin Lazardo, who will now compete in the Nationals next year. Richard O'Leary, NBN News. It was an horrific crash when emergency services were called to Macquarie Road near Fairfax Road, Warners Bay, just before 10 last night. They were faced with devastating injuries. Two passengers in an old model Valiant were killed, a 28-year-old Cardiff man and a 19-year-old Windale woman. Police believe the driver lost control of the car, the vehicle sliding sideways across the road into the path of a southbound Cortina. The driver of the Valiant is in John Hunter Hospital tonight in a serious condition. A 20-year-old woman driving the Cortina was trapped in the wreckage until freed by ambulance rescue officers. Although suffering a fractured thigh and head injuries, she is now in a stable condition. In an ironic twist, the two people killed had been heading home from a St John ambulance meeting. Today they were remembered for their commitment and skill. Very hard working and very conscientious. It's affected everybody in St John. So we're really devastated by it. Police investigations are continuing into how the crash happened on a relatively straight stretch of road. There are similarities with another unrelated crash. A passenger was also killed when the driver lost control of his old model Valiant at Toronto on Sunday, the vehicle sliding into the path of oncoming traffic. Peter Ryan, NBN News.
18 months ago, the former boy from Cessnock left the big smoke for the top job on Maitland Council under a five-year contract. Soon, Mark Fitzgibbon will be repacking his files to move back to Sydney as the general manager of Bankstown Council, which has an annual turnover three times greater than Maitland and the same in staff numbers. Mayor John Martin dispelled rumours that Mr Fitzgibbon's sudden departure is linked to the resignation of former Mayor Bob G three months ago or several contentious development issues faced by the council in recent months. We just couldn't go into bat against the sort of offer that he was made. Now, he, he didn't apply for another job. Um, they came seeking him. The mayor says while Mr Fitzgibbon has been an asset to council, its programs are self-generating and won't be drastically affected by his departure. He says the council will have to do some headhunting itself to find a replacement for Mr Fitzgibbon. He's put in a, a lot of very uh, uh, innovatory ideas to drag Maitland Council right into being a ma the major business in town. Four Eye House has been open for two weeks. Funded by the Department of Community Services, it aims to provide short-term accommodation for homeless teenagers. Tari resident Norm Boyd says many of the street kids who need help will be knocked back because of strict admission guidelines. According to the guidelines, anybody affected by or dependent on drugs or alcohol will be excluded, as well as any young person with a history of violence. The one that I find most offensive is anyone with a mental or physical disability is not going to be allowed into that refuge and that's something out of the dark ages. Borai House is the only crisis refuge between Kempsey and Newcastle. It was closed down in March because of management problems. Ten occupants were sent to Christo House in Port Macquarie. It's now managed by the committee in charge of the Tari Women's Refuge. Norm Boyd's interest in the matter is personal. His son ran away from home and there was nowhere for his son to get the counselling and accommodation he needed in Tari. He says it's been a long wait for the refuge to reopen. Not only is it late in opening, but now they're not going to allow the people into it who it was built for, which to me is incredible. At present, Borai House has only one full-time occupant. It has the capacity to house six. Borai House committee members have refused to comment on the admission guidelines. Tracy Walsh, NBN News. Today on World AIDS Day, a memorial garden grove was opened at the John Hunter Hospital. The hospital is the main provider of services for HIV and AIDS patients between Sydney and the Gold Coast. The garden is a reminder of the past struggles and future victories of all those living with HIV and AIDS. Since the unit was opened in 1984, it's cared for 108 patients who've died. It's important, I think, for everyone to reflect on what it's like to have someone with HIV or AIDS in their community and to remember compassion for those individuals. Dr Michael Boyle says the epidemic in Australia has been contained but there's no room for complacency. The transmission rates have stabilised over the last five or six years so we're now looking at an epidemic where we have somewhere in the region of about a thousand new cases of HIV per year. Jane Anderson, NBN News.
The scenarios were true to life, from the equipment to the injuries of the volunteer victims acting the parts. They're industrially set scenarios and uh, obviously they've got to be uh, realistic. We've got professional makeup artists involved to make them look uh, realistic. The team from Dampier Iron Ore Mine in Western Australia had to free a worker who'd been impaled, as well as attempt to save his co-worker who had suffered a heart attack. Meanwhile, the Parabadu rescue team were found at the scene of a car accident which left five people suffering injuries ranging from gashes and shock to serious internal bleeding. Fourteen teams from open cut and underground mines, Argyle Diamond Mine, an aluminium smelter and a processing plant, all part of the CRA network, were involved, with safety now paramount in all industrial workplaces, keeping cool under pressure is the key. They're under stress from the, from the word go, uh, both in the individual and team events. Uh, they're, they're under pressure and uh, they're also under time limits. The winners of the competition won't be known till later tonight. Joanne Shoebridge, NBN News. Margaret Morrison has nursed hundreds of children in her time, most of them during her seasonal job as one of Maitland's regular Santas. Some have been a little unsure of the man with the flowing beard, but few children, parents or passers-by have ever suspected the jovial character underneath the big red suit to be anything but a man, not even Margaret's mother. Well, she said you missed Santa Claus. Well, she said, mother, I think I'm a bit too old for Santa Claus. Well, she said this one was the best one in town. He was a real actor. I said, thank you very kindly, Mother. That was me. The 60-year-old is well qualified for the job. Not only did she graduate from acting school, she has eight children, two stepchildren, 29 grandchildren and five great-grandchildren. I get a great satisfaction out of it, a great kick. Meanwhile, Margaret's alter ego was handing over a cheque for $11,500 to Riding for the Disabled. The money was raised by the Master Plumbers and Electrical Contractors Association, which has donated more than $90,000 to children's charities in the region in the past decade. A mannequin dressed in the same clothing as missing schoolgirl Gordana Koteski went on show at Charlestown Square Shopping Centre and numerous shoppers came forward with information. We've uh, received a number of telephone calls and approaches at the shopping centre uh, from members of the public. Eight days ago, 16-year-old Gordana's shopping bag and purse were found on the side of the road not far from the shopping complex. Witnesses say they heard a scream. A white Toyota Hilux similar to this was seen racing away. A computer image of the suspect driver is also on public display. Police say they are still confident of finding Gordana, but as each day passes, fears grow. We uh, look at the fact that uh, as time goes on and there's no uh, information coming forward as to her whereabouts, we do become more concerned, yes. Security has been stepped up at the shopping centre. It's believed staff and shoppers are concerned about safety. Peter Ryan, NBN News. It was a competition that attracted some odd-looking vehicles running over a course through Sydney and Canberra last weekend. A complex formula decided the winner, the aim to release the least greenhouse gases not just in driving but also in manufacturing the vehicle. After five days of calculations, the Burrell transport truck came up trumps, running on diesel hull, a mixture of 15% ethanol and 85% diesel. For the company A-Pace, which is developing the diesel hull, the victory is the third year in a row. General Manager Russell Reeves, who is based in Dungog in the Hunter Valley, sees an ethanol mix as a logical way to extend our fuel reserves. At the moment, the ethanol petrol blends and the ethanol diesel blends are being sold at the same price as uh, petrol or diesel. Diesel hull vehicles came first and second, coconut oil third. Peter Ryan, NBN News.
city gone to town. A look comes back and stands. A holly and rose, they just lasted for a while. Well, like tumbling down the air, I have forgotten to smile. They just stand a while. It was a swan song with a smile, a parade through the main street just hours before the new tidy town will be named at a ceremony in Curry tonight. It featured vintage cars and even older forms of transport. For the children, Christmas came early. The town also saluted its victorious league team. And the band played on as Curry relinquished its title as Australia's tidiest town. Pilot and crew took delivery of the new $1.2 million Long Ranger this morning, escorted to the Broadmeadow base by the old Bell 042. Financed largely by mine workers' contributions and fundraising activities, the new chopper will provide one of Australia's busiest rescue and medical services with backup and dual response capacity. The new chopper is equipped with a night sun searchlight, external hoist and a statewide radio service. It can carry two stretcher patients plus crew. you could get engineers who weren't qualified, opening up wrong valves and things on ships, allowing oil to get out and pollute the harbours and the rivers and the, the waterways of Australia. With Drews and Walters five shots clear of the field, today's final round developed into a game of match play. Walters gained an early psychological advantage with a birdie on the first to go to four under. The second hole produced a two-shot swing, with Walters' fine approach setting up another birdie, Drews missing his putt for par after overshooting the green. Walters then produced the shot of the round on the third, almost acing the par three to go four shots clear and three under for the day. Drews picked up a shot on the fourth, but the course record holder failed to put any further pressure on Walters. The 24-year-old Victorian, known on the tour as Robo Golf for his precision-like game, finished with a 71 to pocket the $6,300 winner's cheque and a place in the Australian PGA next year.
It seems like this that the Hunters Department of School Education wants to prevent. Next year, it will be launching a program aimed at resolving conflict within local schools. Part of the program will include a play titled He Hit Me First. Today, $4,000 was handed over by the Kiwani Service Club to playwright Bill Keir of the Footlice Theatre Company. For the next three months, he'll research the subject and turn it into a production to be performed throughout the Hunter. The play will be looking at, at why people fight and, uh, and the different ways that they fight and maybe also ways of not fighting. At Walls End Public, school violence is a thing of the past. In 1990, the school had around 26 violent incidents a week. Now, with more activities for the children and a greater understanding of each other, there are none. One of the things that we have here is a, what we call a happy and safe environment. Uh, we only have two school rules and the second school rule is that you're nice to other people and the children expect that. It's a happy place now. The play should begin travelling the hunter in May. The day after, another night in Newcastle's CBD. A sign smashed, a plate glass window being replaced and a store owner adding up the cost. Engraver John Davey says it's just the latest in a long list of problems for shop owners in the city centre. They've had the same trouble with smashed windows, graffiti on your windows, things like that. It uh, seems to be the accepted thing. Mr Davies now wants a curfew in a bid to stop what the police and security guards can't. It might sound callous but I think there should be a curfew. Anyone picked up after a certain time, lock them up. He says if a solution isn't found, he'll be forced to leave behind 34 years of fond memories of Newcastle and quit the city. I've just lost any confidence in the city itself. I'm around about a retiring age but I love the town. You know, it's done a lot for me, I've got done a lot for it. And I just don't want to be forced out. Richard O'Leary, NBN News. It's going to be a long dry summer. Already rainfall is well below average and it's becoming worse. While the Hunter Water Corporation has been running a concerted advertising campaign encouraging people to save water, storage levels have dropped below 60% and now there's to be restrictions. As of tomorrow we're putting a ban on the use of fixed sprinklers during daylight hours, that is from 7am to 7pm. And this could be just the beginning. If levels continue to fall, there'll be more restrictions. The worst scenario could see storage levels drop below 45% within three months, and this could lead to a total ban on outside watering. Of greatest concern is the Williams River, which for the first time has stopped flowing. The Williams River is where we harvest uh, most of our water to uh, fill Grahamstown Dam. And even though we've had coastal showers which have kept the gardens a little bit moist, in the last few years the flow rates in the Williams River have been at historical lows and this year in particular there's been virtually no flow at all. Also being monitored closely is Chichester Dam which supplies water to the towns of Patterson and Dungog. 
The experts say it's unlikely there'll be significant falls of rain during the next three months. If the drought does break, it could happen late summer or early autumn. Until then, Hunter residents are being asked to conserve water. If they ignore the corporation's instructions, then they may be penalised, with these restrictors placed in their pipes. Jodie McKay, NBN News. General Electric has commissioned Ganin and Tari to produce 12 locomotive cabs for Indonesia. The contract over the next year is worth $20 million. It's the first of a number of important new overseas contracts, the company now directing 35% of its production to the export market. In January, work begins on railway bogies for Japan. Then truck parts will be produced for Hunter Mines. 250 people work at the Tari site. An extra 13 apprentices have been employed to help tackle the heavier workload, with another five workers to be put on next month. Over the past 10 years, Gunin and Tari has manufactured railway stock. To retain employees, the company has diversified into new areas, including truck body parts. Gunin and Management says the Tari company produces 90% of the nation's truck parts, its output boosted by contracts with Komatsu in Japan and Caterpillar in America. Tracy Walsh, NBN News. The blaze engulfed the rear section of the house fronting Broadmeadow Racetrack. Neighbour Carmel Bailey raised the alarm. I was out in the backyard getting washing off the line and just looked up and saw smoke. The caretaker's cottage was vacant. Firefighters sifted through the ashes looking for a cause of the blaze. The wind reigniting the fire. Well, the wind always makes it difficult. It certainly pushed the fire along, but in some respects, the way the men came through the front door, it kept the, the smoke away from them, so it made it a little bit easier for us. The house is adjacent to horse stables. There is a big gap between the house and the stable area, so they've got a pretty good you know, chance. And so I've just swung the fire brigade and, and just kept an eye on it. Jane Anderson, NBN News. The key components of the blueprint for the region's future health services are contained in a newspaper entitled A Healthy Direction. One recommendation is that the role of hospitals change over the next five years. 
they're seen as the last resort rather than the first resort for health care. They're still going to be important, but the focus needs to be on general practice and services out there in the community. Moving patients out of psychiatric hospitals into the community was harshly criticised by Human Rights Commissioner Brian Burdekin last year because the resources didn't follow them into the community. Dr Smyth agrees that shifting general medical services into the community will only work if the resources are in place first. I think we need to explore the concept of bridging finance, that we get those resources out in the community first before we change the roles of the hospitals. The health service is keen for public comment on the future plan. Copies of the newspaper will be available at hospitals and health centres. Jane Anderson, NBN News. Molasses is a product from sugarcane and is an excellent feed for cattle weakened by drought. Ian Blackwood from New South Wales Agriculture today called on the Hunter Region Organisation of Councils to push for a bulk molasses storage area in the port of Newcastle following the closure of a similar facility in Sydney. If farmers could buy the molasses in bulk, it would mean major savings. This year alone, Hunter, Mid-North Coast and Central West farmers have spent $1.5 million on the black gold. At the moment, small amounts are being trucked from the sugarcane belt, but at a cost. The organisation of council says it will support the move for a bulk facility and is encouraging private concerns to assist. The launch of the St Vincent de Paul Christmas Appeal recognised that many people have already given this year. The theme of just a little bit more is trying to call on the last reserves of people's charity in the season of giving. Society's most needy to benefit most from the extra sacrifice. But they also need a little cash to help the society buy food for hampers, toys for children and cash for struggling families. As the drought continues, there's been a marked increase in cries for help from people in the Upper Hunter and Manning. But the society is confident the rest of the community will dig a little deeper. People can send their money to the St Vincent de Paul, PO Box 64, Islington. Richard O'Leary, NBN News. On the 17th of November last year, two-year-old Jared Ting and four-year-old Carol Ann Milton died when fire engulfed this flat at Waratah. It's believed the fire started in the room they were playing in. When brigades arrived, they immediately set about trying to rescue the pair. Today, the bravery of the four firemen who risked their lives in the burning unit was acknowledged. To present this uh, with you, uh, citation is... Uh, Station officer Ron Barrett remembers the day well. I couldn't see more than about two foot in front of me. Phil Turnbull was in front of me and he took one step up and I couldn't find him and he couldn't find me. But uh, once we smoke had cleared a bit after we broke a window, we could see a lot better.
While Ron carried the little girl from the flat, Philip Turnbull searched for the boy. This was just totally black, we didn't know what we were walking on or where we were standing at any stage. One stage we was landing to our left, we didn't even know it was there, we could have fallen down into the kitchen. Making it possible for the men to enter the unit were Jeff North and Rob Tranter. All four say their actions were in the line of duty. Oh, I feel very honoured to do it, but it's just part of our job. We don't feel that we've done anything exceptional. It's just what we're trained for. Jody McKay, NBN News.